Hi, everybody. I'm Madhu Anbargan. I'm a 3 th Sitecore Technology MVP, working as a Sitecore consultant at Tech Systems. Um, you can reach me out on Twitter or LinkedIn or my blog. Hey, everyone. I'm Balaji Kandasamy. I'm a practice director in CEI. <clears throat> also, 2 x uh, Sitecore Technology MVP, my blog site and uh, my Twitter. Okay, today we are going to cover the following topics. Um, what is Covio first place? And then we talk about why Covio, what is new with the newer versions? <clears throat> and uh, the pricing aspect of it. And we have some implementation strategies. We will also go through a, a basic install and a demo. And then we will walk through all the cloud platform features and each items in that, just a quick thing. And then also talk about uh, how to get Kobeo certified. We'll continue with the Q&A. As I talked before, we, we will have this more interactive session. So at any point of time, if you have any doubts, you can always intervene and ask. Nothing wrong with that. <clears throat> so what is Kaveo? So there are like a few bullet points here. Um, first and foremost, Kaveo is just a additional search uh, functionality that you can add on top of Sitecore. And um, it is integrated. It's fully integrated. You just have to install it as a package and you can leverage the Sitecore uh, using Kaveo. Internally, it uses all the a uh, regular Sitecore related search API. So it's not something that you're uniquely doing or anything that needs to be plumbed in to make it work. Um, the main important thing um, I like about Covio is the unified index <clears throat> with the AI powered search capabilities, which means uh, this is more like a unified index. Um, you can connect your Sitecore instance to it. You can connect your uh, uh, other platforms in our case, like we had WordPress that's being also crawled into Covio. Uh, you can connect your YouTube videos into Covio or any other platform. And uh, recently we also had something where we did um, API related things also being integrated. So it becomes as one single index so that uh, you can bring in all the search results in one single place. So that's why they call it as unified index. And it is also AI powered. We'll go in detail. In in upcoming slides, which has the native indexing capabilities, uh, which means in Sitecore you have the regular uh, indexing capability. So you get all the multi site, multi language support there. Um, they also have uh, <clears throat> orders box search controls specific to each different systems. Like SXA has its own tool set from Coveo. They have uh, uh, MVC helper classes that you can use for MVC. They do have a headless. Uh, Headless plugin that you can use. <clears throat> and they also have something called as Atomic, which is specific to React that also can be used. I'll go in detail in upcoming slides. They do have uh, inbuilt XTB integration. So this is just the overall picture um, of Coveo. So we can start from the left bottom corner. You can see the Coveo Cloud Unified Index. On the left, you see all the icons like Salesforce, Microsoft Dynamics, Oracle, Sitecore, and you can see multiple different channels. All the data gets into one single index. <clears throat> and then eventually that index data is given into a query pipeline. When you use it, starts typing something, uh, doing a search, basically you can see that it goes through the <clears throat> search cycle. Um, and all this data is also captured with the XTB. You can see the personalized data also can be fed in. And Coveo by default has this uh, uh, machine learning. So anytime you do a search and you click on certain links, then things are ranked automatically and saying like, okay, somebody searched for this term. Uh, they didn't click on the first two links, but they clicked on the third link. So the more the third link is being clicked and eventually the <clears throat> machine learning algorithm will fine tune the relevance and that result comes up top. So more of the behavioral data is also being used. And then recommendations is also something that they do. So we go into the question of like, why should I use Coveo? You know, out of the box, uh, Sitecore does support uh, uh, solar. Uh, earlier it used to be Lucene and nowadays it's all solar. But a lot of things are not available out of the box. It does the basic search, but it does, it does not support a predictive search or it needs to be plumbed in. It's not something like out of the box, you could just quickly get it working. So those kind of things are not supported. And that's the main reason people tend to have much more powerful platforms 
like Covio and there are other options as well. So unified index is one thing we did talk about that. Multiple sources, you can put everything in one single index and then use that. Predictive search is something common that most of the clients ask for. When you start typing in a text box, you wanted the results to come as a predictive search and then it's easier for them to fill in and click. Better accuracy and relevance is also an important thing. Basically, if you are searching for something <clears throat> and if this result is in the third page or something, then it's not going to be really helpful. So the main thing is when you're searching for some relevance and it should be in the first page and mostly, most possibly in the first five results or something. And Covio has their own um, machine learning and algorithm that helps in the accuracy and relevance. And like I talked before, like when you click on certain results, the more users click on that, they, it understands and it fine tunes its uh, relevance. Optimize automatically. There is a scheduled job. Uh, we'll go through that. That is also related to the automatic relevance tuning, which happens in a specified uh, uh, time intervals. Uh, typically, it's like a three months period that it tunes and certain things you can set it up in a month or so. <clears throat> it also supports multi-region. Uh, this is specific to uh, if you're dealing with uh, clients that require GDPR support and they don't want the data to stay, stay want the data to stay inside the Europe region, not to use US servers or something like that. Um, so you can have your license created either in the US uh, US thing, US location, or it can be in Western Europe that uh, you know, it, they have their data centers there, and they also support. Uh, mirroring capabilities between these two different centers. Um, so if in case you have a website that is also possible to run in Europe and you also have a US that you can have like offline uh, sync between these two or like a replica set. A lot of out of the box integration. <clears throat> so Covea is not specific to Sitecore. It is being used in a lot of other platforms uh, as well, more like Adobe or WordPress and. Uh, even any websites, you can integrate Covio easily. Uh, personalized results. So this is something related to the XTB. Um, you can have personalized results specific to those users. It's also supported. And last but not least, they do support containers. Recently, they, uh, they, are, uh, they don't have an official image yet, but they do support Docker containers and AKS hosting for Covio. <laughs> um, unified index. Uh, you can see all these are the different types of sources that are supported. Uh, in my case, I've mostly used uh, um, Sitecore. I've used something and I've used Sitemap uh, for sites that are non Sitecore, non WordPress, or any, any website. You could just give a Sitemap, it will work. Um, also, had a better. Uh, <clears throat> better usage with a uh, REST API. Um, so in case if a web service is emitting a data, this is specific to um, order cloud. So in, in that case, if order cloud is having all the catalog, they don't have a front end face for it, but uh, they have APIs that you can crawl the data. So that is somewhere I have used. And uh, RSS feed is something common that is also helpful to crawl the data. Uh, moving on to what, what's new with Covio recently, what they have come up with this uh, query suggest preview. Earlier, if you start typing, you get this type ahead. Now you're also getting this uh, nice view of those products being more like a preview of those uh, products. This is specifically used in uh, Covio Commerce, but can be also used in your regular scenarios. <clears throat> Another thing is, which I like the most is the dynamic navigation experience. Uh, for example, you can see this is changing. Most of the times, the facets are always hard coded. They are not dynamic on the fly when you change things and the facets dynamically changes. But you can see in this case, if I'm searching for laptop, showing memory and storage. But if I search for a tablet, then it's showing like a brand and screen size, which is quite useful. Uh, hosted search page component is something that recently they, uh, they have added to SXA. <clears throat> this is specific to SXA. Uh, hosted search page uh, is something I will also go in detail, but this is something like UI, all the designing, everything is done in Covio platform. 
you can just add the component inside your website and then it will list all the posted pages available and then you can just choose and that automatically gets injected into the page and here you can see it has its own experience editor kind of a view where you can drag and drop and do all those things the main architecture um so let's go from uh, the numberings are available there so let's start from the one so in this case uh, application data uh, it can be site core uh, ap source or any sources so for that matter so it's get into the it gets into the index and uh, number two you can see other source of content which in our case consider it's a website and the data is also getting into the index and uh, number three is your query pipeline so anytime you do a search, typically that goes through a pipeline. That is what they call the query pipeline. <coughs> that helps in uh, when you do the search, everything goes through that. And I will also show what is the purpose of that. Um, but for now, let's look into like the data goes into that and then it gets the data back to you. <coughs> and they also call something a search hub where uh, things are organized into one hub. Um, this will be most of the cases, uh, um, either a website or a particular section inside the website that is also called as hub. So there are certain things organized with the hub. And they also have other search interfaces that you're doing it. Any interaction that you do with that is going into number four, which is your usage analytics. And then eventually that is being fed into the machine learning. <clears throat> and the machine learning also helps in fine tuning and relevance. That's number six coming back. So this is the general uh, general overall architecture of Coveo. Um, going into the version, we do have uh, multiple versions of Coveo. Um, it started with four and now they also had something with on-prem uh, for free that they don't support anymore. Coveo for Sitecore 4 point something is also deprecated at the moment. Uh, Coveo 5.6, uh, 5.1 is the latest one, I think. One thing to be aware of is um, the technology wise, you can see I've listed ASP.NET web forms. We do have MVC, SXA, JSS. They also do support containers. ASP.NET web forms is only support in Coveo Sitecore 4.x and it's not supported anymore. And Coveo is recommending to use hosted search pages for that kind of scenarios. If you are moving into F5, 5.x. And also another thing last year, Somewhere in the end, they stop supporting Sitecore 4.x. And also they don't support uh, anything. If you're using Sitecore 4, the analytics is not also being supported. So basically you will start losing all your analytics data. So that is also reason like we did it for like a couple of our clients where uh, analytics data was totally blanked out after a certain point, then we were forced to like update it to five. From the technology aspect, I did speak ASP.NET, MVC, SXA, and JSS. Um, this is just a rough pricing from the enterprise pricing point. It will be different, but uh, the Pro Plus is something they used to have a Pro and Enterprise. Now it is being named as Pro Plus and Enterprise. <coughs> enterprise Plus, you can see the difference between here. Um, mostly they are organized with the number of queries that you make, and every single query that we make to their platform is counted. And you can see the queries per month is like 200 or 300 here. The unified index, everything is supported. On the bottom, if you see the XTB ranking editor or recommendations are not supported in Pro, but in Enterprise Plus. Now, another thing to be aware of this is in Pro, uh, you can see the connectors are limited for Sitecore plus two plus, plus two more cloud connectors, which means you can have a Sitecore source and you can have one more website and one more RSS or sitemap field kind of thing. But if you need more and more different types of sources, then enterprise platform is, uh, is, is the way to go. Implementation strategies. Uh, the first and foremost, uh, they were doing with uh, Coveo Search UI, which is nothing but a simple JavaScript library. You can just include that. In MVC, when we do with the components, that's what they do. <clears throat> it's just a JavaScript and certain things you can instantiate a client side, uh, entire Coveo interface uh, that is still being used. Uh, hosted pages is another option. Um, hosted pages, again, that's something like you are not, like the entire designing is done in the Coveo uh, 
cloud platform only the skeleton of that page is coming down to the browser side and then it instantiates the Covio interface using the client side JavaScript. Um, that is a search UI is what it uses internally. This is mainly useful when you are dealing with non sitecore websites. You want to get the Covio search, but you don't have sitecore there, or how do we get it there? Hosted pages is the way to go. I do have an example also here. Uh, see if it opened. Just quickly show that. <clears throat> um, and this site, whatever you're seeing here, not sure if it is a site or website, but uh, this particular search option you see here is done using uh, uh, Covio hosted pages. You can see this here, Covio. And this is in their official documentation as an example. It's simple as that. You just throw the um, script for that, and then the hosted page gets injected here. There is a GitHub open source project as well to do it. Uh, the next one is uh, Kobeo Headless. This was targeted specifically for uh, React <clears throat> or anything headless. Um, <coughs> uh, in headless, they have, um, it's more like a raw React component. It's not like polished. Um, every time you need to have a Kobeo interface, Basically, you are doing a copy paste of the same components and again and again and using it. Uh, so they came up with something new called as Atomic. Atomic is more like a wrapper on top of headless so that Atomic is predefined whenever you need those components, you could just use this Atomic wrapper. One thing to be aware of is Atomic has something called a Shadow DOM. Just to avoid Shadow DOM, I, I don't know, I'll just give a quick glimpse on what Shadow DOM is. When you do a regular DOM, it's it's part of your web page. You can inspect that item and you can <clears throat> directly get access to those dev or span elements that are created. Shadow DOM is more like a wrapper that it encapsulates all the components into, inside the shadow DOM and that does not. So for example, if you have a H1 tag and you have a particular CSS class at the website level, um, that will affect all the H1 tags across the site. But if you put something inside the shadow DOM as a H1 tag, the main class does not affect the shadow DOM because shadow DOM is, it has its own wrapper and it has its own styling and everything, which makes it a little bit difficult. My personal choice, I would not recommend Atomic at the moment. It is still not uh, fully baked. It's been there for a year. It's being being improved. But when we personally implemented that, we had a lot of issues when we were working with the styles. Um, so my recommendation would be to use headless. And you can see as per the diagram, it's atomic is at the top level. It's just a wrapper for headless. And eventually headless always talks to Covio API. Okay. I will pass it back to Madhu for a quick installation and demo on Sitecore. Thank you, Balaji. Um, let me start sharing my screen. <laughs> my screen. Yeah. Okay. Um, so here is my Sitecore uh, 10 to instance. Um, it's a vanilla instance. I have just installed it as a uh, Sitecore uh, using SIA, Sitecore in install assistant. So this is my vanilla instance. I haven't installed anything else. Um, it's a pure, uh, I just installed it and um, here is the site. So um, when I go to a desktop and this is my 10.2 and uh, I'm going to install the Sitecore, um, I'm going to install the Covio, uh, Covio for Sitecore 10.2. So installing Covio is very straightforward. So all we need to do is we need to go to the installation wizard and download the Sitecore package for 10.2. So here is the Covio package. I installed it from the site. It's um, Sitecore 10.2 and the Covio version 5.0 whatever the minor versions. So once downloaded, I can just go here and uh, install it. So I just need to accept the terms and conditions and says here is the documentation, stuff like that. 
and um, the package name, author, everything, and then install. Um, so here I'm not going to install it because it's going to take a few minutes, uh, stuff like that, but I have already installed it. Um, so I just wanted to show basically after installing what happens is uh, uh, once it installed, it actually brings up a pop-up to connect to the site uh, Kovayo, uh, where you authorize the Kovayo uh, to uh, where you authorize the Kovayo so that Psycho can talk to Kovayo. So uh, what I have done is I have done the same thing in my blog, uh, install and configure Kovayo. So here is where I downloaded the Psycho 102 package and um, just went through the installation visit. So once I did the install, uh, what happens is this is the pop-up it brings up. It says like activate Kovayo for Psycho package. Um, so once we go in there, uh, basically it asks you to log in. The login has like different options um, based on your uh, client needs, like a Microsoft account or Salesforce or custom SSO or login with your email. Um, so here I just went with the uh, with Google, my Gmail account, because I was just creating a demo Kovayo account. So um, uh, whatever is applicable to you, you can go with the real account. Uh, but for demo purpose, I just went with the Gmail account. And uh, once I logged into my Gmail, it asked to authorize uh, the agreement and policy and you will just grant access. Um, and at this point, like I don't have anything created in Sitecore, like um, in Kovayo, uh, sorry, it's Kovayo and Sitecore is I'm just getting confused. Uh, but in Kovayo, like I don't have created the form or anything like that. It's just a pure vanilla instance. And I have just authorized the Kovayo to uh, talk to Sitecore as an authorization is successful. So once it's successful, now we need to go and configure the Kovayo. Um, so let me actually go in here. So now that the installation is successful, um, what we see is um, just going into the control panel. And here you will see a complete new section like Kovayo search with an indexing manager with, with its own indexing manager and a configuration manager, diagnostic page and all that stuff. So I'm just going inside the uh, configuration manager and uh, here is the organization it's been associated with. Uh, but let me uh, log in so that I can create a new one. So here is the existing uh, for existing Kovayo cloud it's associated with, uh, but when you come in new, you just like go in and log in and you can give the organization name as like um, demo, SUG, Pittsburgh, uh, stuff like that. And uh, you can go with organization type as, um, Pro trial or enterprise trial. Um, here is uh, here there is a pricing and uh, uh, and its uh, pros and cons. Everything is listed over here. Uh, but for the demo purpose, I went with the test organization because this gives ninety days of um, uh, ninety days of um, Kovayo Cloud. Uh, whereas when you go with Pro or enterprise, it's a fifteen days one. So you need to either renew it or you need to create a new one. Um, so uh, if you are if you are um, if you're just uh, exploring, so I would suggest to go with the test organization and uh, you'll just say apply and restart. So what happens is, so this will actually create a Kovio cloud in the Kovio platform. Um, so let me go here. Um, so this is my existing one. And uh, when I log into Kovio platform, uh, this is the platform.cloud.kovio.com. Uh, where I logged in using my uh, Gmail account. So this is my uh, Gmail account and I have just logged in using the Kovio platform. And uh, here you can see that uh, the Kovio cloud has been created. Uh, the demo SUG um, uh, with an ID, uh, stuff like that, it's already created. So, um, so this is how it talks to. So we are in Sitecore and we have created the organization. And when we come to the Kovio, uh, Kovio platform, you can see that the, uh, the cloud is already created with its ID and uh, stuff like that. So once the organization is created, uh, we need to index all the documents that are already available. So um, Kovio has the master index and the web index uh, similar to Sitecore. And uh, when we say rebuild index all, 
Um, basically, it rebuilds the index with the stages, uh, like setup requirements, sending the permissions, sending documents, and documents validation. Um, since this is in vanilla instance, I don't have anything created, so it just shows two documents. Um, this is exactly what you will see in the sources as well, like your Covio master index, Covio web index, and you will see that there are two items uh, already ready to be uh, consumed. Uh, same here, like you can add any resource, as you can see, uh, uh, Bala's blog and my blog is already added. So it's pretty easy to add any source. It could be, uh, the source could be uh, uh, your blog or your website or YouTube or um, AEM or like it has like tons and tons of options. Um, basically, you can add anything you like to index and uh, it actually indexes all the uh, the documents and uh, and it will be ready to be queried in the search. So say for example, for uh, indexing a website, all you need is a URL and then you can give a source name, whatever you like to have. And then when you say start indexing, it will actually index all the items inside the website. Um, so as you can see here, the items and its, uh, and its uh, size and everything is uh, listed over here. So, um, and uh, here as well, you can see the master index and the web index. When I started the indexing, you can see that the restart, uh, rebuild started a few few seconds ago. So this way it's very, uh, very connected. And uh, you can see instantly that uh, what's been, uh, what's been built and what's, what's not been rebuilt. Um, we'll come to the diagnostic one when there are some issues how do we diagnose how do we uh, how do we troubleshoot the issue how do we um, um, we'll just get into more details uh, in a moment so this is how basically you reindex uh, the items inside the uh, inside the covio and um, when it goes to the fields, it's typically uh, similar as Sitecore. Uh, it has its own um, template and fields, and uh, it has its computed fields as well, like similar to Sitecore. And uh, you can basically uh, you can basically add any external fields as well. Like if there is a feed coming from uh, anywhere, uh, you can basically integrate it here as well. Coming on to security is um, there is a psycho credentials um, which you need to log in and uh, pretty much you might be guessing my password at this point. So it's a default username and password I have given out for demo purpose um, and uh, some of the user identities and stuff like that, which uh, I haven't changed anything. I just went by default, haven't changed anything. Um, I mean, doesn't need anything to be changed. Uh, relevance tools, this is a bit advanced uh, when you have Covio machine learning uh, where you need to train the data model or uh, like apply some algorithm algorithmic models. Uh, this is the place to go. Um, when you have lots of data and you wanted to train the data to be uh, uh, data to be uh, returning in certain way, this is the place to go. And uh, Covio Cloud Organization, which we have seen already, um, creating the new or the existing one. And uh, the indexing options, it has two different options, one with uh, indexing with HTML or uh, indexing only the Sitecore item data. Uh, by default, it goes by the rendered HTML, so I just went with it. Um, you can change it to um, Sitecore item data, but the recommended approach is to go by, uh, go by the rendered HTML. And uh, here is the form configuration name I have given, um, the Sitecore Covio name. So all this is basically stored in uh, Covio configuration file. Um, so basically when we install Covio, uh, what happens is uh, inside our instance, inside the app config include, there is a new folder called Covio. And inside that um, there are a bunch of configurations. Uh, these are the three configurations which are uh, pretty much very important uh, whenever you troubleshoot the configs. So uh, anything when Covio could not talk to, um, uh, Psycho could not talk to Covio or indexing isn't happening or uh, anything you uh, you would like to troubleshoot, these are the three indexes. Uh, these are the three configs which comes into picture. And uh, here you can see that the API key and uh, 
where it goes and you can see the organization id which is uh, exactly similar to what we are what we are seeing over here uh, demo isug 8ak 3d64l um so this is the, exactly the ID you will be seeing over here. And uh, this is the one we have been the platform.coveo.platform.cloud.coveo.com is where we are in. And we see that uh, the organization is being tied up with. And uh, the other config we have is um, where it, if it, it uh, uh, yeah, here is the form name, um, the site code Coveo, which I was showing over here. Um, so basically all the settings, whatever we are doing here, everything is stored in that config. So if anything is messed up, um, here is where you will come and see uh, to double check to make sure your farm name, your uh, organization ID, um, API keys, everything is appropriate. Um, so, um, so this is pretty much about configuring the Coveo and uh, once it's configured, um, basically, um, once it's configured, basically it's all ready to be consumed to search. And uh, one more tool I would like to show is the um, indexing manager, uh, which we have seen already, the diagnostic page. Uh, this is my favorite page of all. Um, this takes a minute or two to, um, to load. Um, I think I already have the page open, I believe. Yeah, here is the page. Um, so this is this takes two minutes to load, but this is super helpful uh, because um, here you can already see the cloud service. Uh, like everything is up and running, but when it troubles, you will see that it's a it's a red color with the with the with the message underneath in it, and uh, it's it's pretty helpful to troubleshoot the, any issues. And uh, as well as when it's up and running, and sometimes content author comes in and says that, hey, I have created some of the pages and I published it, but still uh, Covio isn't, I mean, on the search, the pages aren't coming up. So then the below, uh, the below sections are super helpful. Um, uh, here as well, you can see what version of Covio and uh, the organization ID, uh, the name and the ID and how many documents are there and all that um, stuff. And uh, here are the configuration files, a bunch of configurations files, but then, uh, pretty much a couple of uh, them are the important ones which we uh, use it for troubleshooting. And uh, here you can see that the site code published items and uh, you don't see it, any items are published because this is a, a brand new uh, site code 10 to instance and that's why you are not seeing the items as being published. So here, once I publish, I think it will show that everything is, I mean, all the Covio related items are published. And uh, here is another pretty important thing to re-index. Um, so, uh, so whenever, I mean, you can pretty much re-index like all the Covio index from here or from the indexing manager. But then this is, uh, will be like uh, super helpful when you say like, you know, there is a particular one which, you, which, you, which the content author isn't seeing and they have created some pages underneath the test, but then it doesn't show. So all you can do is like come over here and then put in the path and you can just uh, index just that node. And then you can go into the search and see um, whether the pages is coming up or not. Um, this is again, uh, one other, my favorite uh, place to uh, index um, to resolve some of the issues. And um, here is another thing, um, here is another one uh, which is super helpful in, uh, in uh, production. Because when we go for production, when you have Azure or uh, any sorts of, like if you don't have permission to log into the uh, production log logs, basically you can come here and uh, you can choose whatever the latest log. And then when you say view log, it basically shows everything. So uh, just don't worry about my red ones with the XDB ones. Um, I think I haven't configured the XDB properly, but. Uh, but the idea is that uh, it shows the complete log. So basically you can troubleshoot uh, where it's failing, what it's doing, everything over here. 
And uh, here is the indexing list. Uh, it has all the Sitecore index and as well as the Covio index as well. And it has the field is Covio uh, uh, index. Uh, it says yes, and it gives all the information about what are the DLLs and where it is existing in your um, system. So this is pretty much all about the Covio installation and configuration and uh, troubleshooting. With this, I'll just pass over to Balaji for um, the platform walkthrough. Let me stop sharing. Okay, thank you, Madhu. Let me uh, share. So, you able to see my screen now? Yep. Okay. So I have the logged into the logged in into the same platform here. Um, considering the time, I'll just quickly skim through it. Uh, these are the main areas that uh, <clears throat> you can see all the details here. Content is one area where uh, Madhu was explaining how how you can add multiple sources. So in this case, we have a site core source and we also have a site map source. Um, log browser. This is one another important thing. Whenever a new item is being indexed, for example, uh, Madhu just triggered a <clears throat> index for her Sitecore instance, and you can see at 5.33, a particular Sitecore item is being indexed. And it goes through a process of uh, indexing. So more like a, it does as a batch process. So how Kaviya works is whenever it is pushing the data from your Sitecore instance into the cloud, it doesn't push everything at once. It takes as batch, and every batch is con consists of 100 items. So the 100 items, the batch gets into Covio, and then it takes that batch, and then it does the processing, uh, and it does the mapping. It, it goes through a multiple step process here, and finally it goes through the consuming process. And then that's when the data is available for you to, uh, for available for the search. So you can go, you can see these different stages here. <clears throat> it says pre-indexing, mapping, detecting, and then you can also see this consuming. Streaming is where when the data is being sent from the client side all the way to the Covio platform, that's when it starts streaming. And then you can see consuming, directing, processing, and then it maps the field values, what is being crawled, and goes through this entire thing. <clears throat> so anytime you face any issue with a particular item not being indexed, I want to see what values are in those items or what's happening, this is the place to do. Most of the times, if you expand, you can see the copy of the URI, and the URI is typically your uh, item GUID. For example, you can see it is a database web item ID. The GUID is there, and language, what version, everything is available. It helps in debugging. <clears throat> Going into fields, this is one thing to be much aware of. If you're dealing with Sitecore and Coveo, all the fields are, all the fields in the Sitecore is not crawled. There are a default set of fields that will be crawled. And anytime you need to add any new fields or like you built a custom field called like first name, last name, address or something, those values should be defined in the config files that Madhu was showing. <coughs> so if you are coming here, I can add a field. I can say, for example, I can do a test field, um, do different types, if it's string, date, or <coughs> saying lowercase only test. So I can do a test and then I can say whether it is a facet, multifacet, or is it sortable? All this should be matching. That's when it will do. And you can also see on the right-hand side, um, the search operator, whether this is allowed to be shown in the results or is it more like a metadata not available for search, but internally it's being used. And then free text searchable. So is this particular field should be available, available for free text search and should it be used for ranking and stemming here? <clears throat> One thing to be aware of is if you add any field here, and if this field is not defined in your Sitecore config, anytime Sitecore is doing a synchronization of the Coveo settings from Sitecore on-prem or any other system back to Coveo, it will wipe out all these fields that you create here in the platform. So the best uh, advice that I would give is like anytime you need to add this test field with this configuration, so this has to be done in your Coveo config file not here. And anytime on your existing files, 
you can go and click edit and then you can see i don't want this facet or i want this particular things are facet you can change these values but this will also get reset whenever it is synchronizing so if i need to change this thing then i need to put it in my cobio configs and then that gets synchronized <clears throat> content browser it's an important thing it's more like a generic browsing of your site core uh, of your uh, um, contents from all the indexes in this case you can see different index types are there most of the time if i'm doing a debugging and i'm not able to find specific things you can choose that particular index and then you can particularly click on one particular item click on the properties and then you should be able to see all the field values here so in this case i want to see the created date so i can go here and then i should be able to see the created date so in this case if in case i had a display name or first name last name um and i'm saying like i'm not able to find it for example i do that so in that case i'm not able to find it so it did not crawl then we need to say okay i didn't define the field that's the reason it's not crawling so this is one area that's very important and useful when you're doing debugging uh, if i do a blog <clears throat> um take one of those yeah, let me take this one and then do a properties and then you can see all the tags and everything is available here and um, all the <clears throat> blog related details are available okay this is your content browser um and the other more area like these three we don't use this is security identities is where um in this case we are using you can click on the browser identities and you can see <clears throat> all possible these are allowed these are not allowed and things like that all the identities are allowed or added here crawling modules <clears throat> we, we're not using this basically the crawling module is the one we have with sitecore it's automatically doing that for us commerce i'm not going in detail but uh, commerce it's something new with Covio that they did and it's more like a catalog you can add this and basically all the items are crawled with the pricing and whenever you are buying things in the cart and everything all the information related this is a whole new area that need to be explored but the base idea is when you are buying things everything is being crawled you get the entire cart experience more like amazon and you can do the price changes it supports user specific pricing and everything possible uh, and this is a service uh, this is more like a customer service kind of a thing whenever you're doing a case and all those things can be crawled um, when somebody is calling and saying like i am having this issue so just like the case assisted they, they can just go inside this and then look for a particular case and then probably help answer the question by the customer search this is main area i was talking about the query pipelines earlier <clears throat> so the best practice of doing query pipelines is we need to create each like one query pipeline per search site or search interface so that way you can do a lot of things here i'll go in detail here if you go inside the query pipelines <clears throat> this is the default one you have and then you have a b testing so in this case you can say if i'm searching for something show this result first or show that result first and see which one performs well and then you can fine tune the content uh, like groups and campaigns also can be done according to the campaigns the results are pushed up or down that can be done here search terms this is the search that typically we use for example if i do a uh, search for robot then i can hear the search of bot robot or robotic so any of these terms and then i can point it to one this is the term that they are looking for there are also stop words that you can do uh, most of the clients typically use this thesaurus and stop words uh, result ranking this is also another thing for example uh, the client would say i'm searching for this particular term that result is coming at eight but i want this result to be up top or the first or a feature result that can be done in this uh, result you can add the rules and you can do that here <clears throat> machine learning in this case i didn't do but when you click on associate model <clears throat> there is automatic relevance tuning you can have automatic relevance tuning um query suggests there are like different models that are out of the box available so we're not doing as much you could just create those models and then eventually use them here and these models will be specifically deployed to this pipeline so anytime a result goes through this pipeline is also looked up with the machine learning and it gets 
on the behavioral data. Filters is something you can do directly. For example, I can do a add rule here, and then I can say which field. I could say author is, and then I can give a field. So in this case, if I do this, automatically what happens is my default pipeline, any results, it's going to do an automatic filter internally. One thing to be aware of is anytime you work with query pipelines, they're always live. So any changes or any mistakes I make here is going to right away affect to the end users who are doing any search through that pipeline. Just keep in mind. The query parameters. <clears throat> so in this query parameters, you can have those parameters and then have conditions. Mostly this will be used when you are using uh, campaigns, uh, external campaigns, more like uh, if you're sending somebody from uh, um, TikTok or Instagram or Facebook, then those kind of things you can look at. If this is the case, do this and you can add conditions. Ranking weights. <clears throat> when you add a ranking weight, you can see here, uh, most of the times we don't want the last modified date to be the higher ranking keywords and you can set up this priority in most of the cases. If the keyword matches the title, I increase the ranking weight and I don't care if it is updated recently or not. And the keyword frequency, this is like something you can fine tune. Um, triggers. <clears throat> triggers is something like uh, which we commonly used is if somebody is searching for a particular term, uh, you could send them to a particular page. Those kind of things are trigger. In my case, uh, if somebody is searching for a particular word, we want them to be kicked directly into the internet site. In that case, we were using these triggers. <clears throat> uh, we do have conditions. Let's quickly skim through considering the time. Um, search pages. So <clears throat> in search pages, this is the one I wanted to go through. Um, you can create um, posted pages. So in this case, I just created two different pages. I'll just quickly show through. It's asking me to do this. Okay, so you can see this is the, uh, this is a page directly created directly in Coveo. Uh, the expectation is you'll not be using this page more like an iframe or anything, but the idea behind is like you click on the settings um, here. <clears throat> You can choose the pipeline, do those changes here. Uh, the search results, you can change the layout how you want, although the designs are, this is the modern, it's not the classic one, this is the modern one. I will also show the other one possible. And then there are like some default templates that I can choose. And you can see all the designs, I can decide what I want. And I can also do the facets, which field, what title I want to, everything can be done here. Finally, if I hit save, uh, finally, I hit, finally I hit save and then I can continue that. And they also have the styles that you can change here. Um, this got changes and I will also go back to this page, which is a classic editor page. So this is what I preferably use. The modern one looks good, but it's not too uh, customizable. So in this page, if you see, I can click on each item, I can edit it, what type I want, or any field that I'm looking for. Uh, each component is editable, I can drag and drop what I want. Uh, the main thing I wanted to show is, when you go into the code view, you get the skeleton. So how hosted pages works is, whenever the hosted pages are being requested from Coveo, the Coveo just gives the skeleton back to the end user. And once the skeleton is received, then it instantiates this entire Coveo uh, interface from the JavaScript. So if, that's what we typically use this. And that's their recommended approach for ASP.NET if you're not having support. <clears throat> okay, any uh, questions till now or like, yeah, I'll go quickly, running late. 
Um, so this is the models that we were talking about machine learning. In this case, I just created only the <coughs> associated relevance tuning and you can see there are not much queries since it's a test environment. But you do have some out of the box um, uh, learning model. Typically, we use this automatic relevance tuning, and then we use this uh, query suggestions. Query suggestions is something that um, once you start that, uh, another thing to keep in mind is uh, it will. Um, you can see this here. Typically, it gives a default period, so we'll do weekly, and then the data period is uh, three months. So the for three months data it holds, and then it relearns itself, but this is the recommended approach. So you can hit next and then you can just add a model. Then it gets available here. It says waiting, next update in seven days. So anything, if you if it is associated with my default pipeline, then automatically every query goes through that. It gets added here. The more the terms you are, do queries, that's when the automatic uh, text box will be available for you. So they have some model testing as well. You can try some testing to ensure that your uh, machine learning model is working as expected. Uh, going into the analytics, there are like out of the box, there are reports available. Uh, the main things used here is uh, the content gaps is something that is useful for the clients. When they're doing search, um, they can test what are the searches being performed and what people are not finding the data. For example, a lot of times people are searching for a particular term. And if your search is not giving data, that can be given to the content authoring team so they can build the data around it, um, those kind of things. And activities where like who is browsing, which browser, which location, all those things you can see from their uh, search relevance as well. <clears throat> and the visit browsers as well. I don't think so you're not going to have a uh, basic environment so you don't have much here. Um, in the organization, uh, in the settings, you can see how many queries are allowed and how many is being performed, how many content sources are being used, how many fields and all the data are available here. <clears throat> so here is the role manager, more like the roles and groups are created. And then the members who are part of this organization, uh, you can also give temporary access. And a lot of times you want to give somebody a temporary access just to check something, you can give this. API keys is where uh, these are all automatically generated. Sometimes, for instance, in case of uh, Sitecore JSS, you might have to come here and manually add the uh, API key and then use it internally in the application. The last but not least, this uh, one is related to resource snapshots. Um, when you're doing, like when you're creating, uh, so when you're creating things, there are like two things available typically with Coveo. A new organization, they will give you a sandbox and they give you a production instance. So whenever you're doing changes and testing something in Sandbox, you want to promote that to production. Uh, re resource snapshots is something you could do. You can just create a snapshot in your uh, stage environment and then get that promoted into your production. <clears throat> One last thing I want to show here is, uh, this is the regions that I was talking about. So you have a uh, US, EU, and AU. Uh, in this case, I have an organization in U EU, e US, but when I click on EU, and try to create it automatically switches me entirely into the Eastern Eastern Europe region and then you can create that. I think that is all I covered with the platform pretty rushed through. Right on. Um, <laughs> just a quick question I have. Um, and yeah. the XDB world, right? So let's say if we have some custom attributes or profile information in our XDB for experience analytics or some other reasons, right? Mm -hmm. and then have any additional contact assets, you know, things of that nature. So when we have those kind of stuff, then how, where would we configure in Covio if you want to have some custom search relevances or, you know, depending upon those XTB data? Okay. So the Covio related XTB, if you want to push that information in two things, two places you need to configure, one is related to those fields and connectivity that you need to do it in your site core configs. And the second thing is consuming that in your pipelines. If you're specifically looking for a data and then those fields are available in your pipelines, that's where you do the connection. You do something on the Sitecore side, ensure that everything is configured there. And also you do certain things on the pipeline to ensure that's being used in the search interface. Gotcha, yeah, perfect. Um, then 
I know there is a personalization aspect of Covio as well here. When we configure those, the personalization engine in our or rules engine in our site core has anything to do with the personalization that Covio does? Is there no, any? They both are two different things. No, they are not connected. Gotcha. Perfect. Thanks. Yep. Thank you. Um, Madhu, I'll let you speak through for uh, the certification. Balaji, I think Prafil has some question or something. Yeah, Prafil. Um, I have a, I have like three kinds of question at varying uh, degrees of specificness to it. Uh, I don't know if this is the right time. Uh, I want to. No, okay, let's do one thing. We just have a couple of slides. We'll just close it and then. Sure, uh, sure. We'll have a that works for me. Thank you. Mother, you want to cover the certification? Sure. Um, so the site, uh, the Covio certification is uh, simple and very straightforward uh, because it's uh, it's a open book session. Uh, so basically, you can do the training whether it's in person or online. Uh, the in person only happens in uh, Quebec, Canada, or in San Francisco. So which I did not do in either locations. Uh, all I did was online um, online um, online training, which is called Level Up. Uh, it has a small, small modules, which each and every topic, all you need to do is go through the topic a couple of times and you'll be familiarized and uh, you can create your own demo site and explore like as much as you can. Once you're comfortable, uh, the Covio certification is free. Uh, the training is as well free. Uh, the in-person is, however, it's not free, I guess. Uh, but I'm not it's sure not. because, yeah, it's not. I, I, it is not. You need to pay and uh, it's a one and a half day training that you do. Mostly in the SFO office or in Canada. Canada, that's right, that's right. So um, I think that's why I did the online as free and uh, did the certification as well. Um, the certification is uh, an open book, uh, open book uh, certification where it has like three hours and you need to answer 90 questions. Um, so which uh, you can Google pretty much all the questions, but um, I would say it's like 40 to 50 percent is there in Google, but then the rest you need to find it pretty quick uh, so that you can answer it in uh, three hours. Um, there is one other thing is that once you answer, you cannot go back to the previous question, um, but you can pause the exam in between and then you can resume back. But however, it's recommended to do it and done it in one sitting. Um, but this was like a quite fun because it's not like a site course certification, it's an open book certification. So, uh, I mean, I would recommend like doing the level up course, which is a free, and then again, a site code, uh, Covio certification, uh, it's a free again. So, um, so uh, it's a straightforward and an easy one. And uh, join the site course uh, Slack and the community if you're not, if you aren't. Uh, it's pretty helpful asking the questions. Uh, very active community. Um, just wanted to put in here um, so that if you are not part of the community, please join. I also want to add one more thing. Uh, Kobeo has their own site core community. Oh. Sorry, uh, their own Slack channel, but okay. that is a, a place not targeted for site core. They have a site core channel, but there is more like a, in general, like Adobe and AEM and every different people can do it. And uh, in site core community also, we have a separate Covio, Covio channel that like you can join. So there are like two different Slack communities. Covio has their own community and site core has, and site core, we just have one channel for Covio if you have any. So true. Okay, time for Profil to start with the questions that you have. Okay, uh, sounds good. Now, uh, first of all, uh, thank you very much, uh, Madhu and uh, Bala, for having this whole session. Right, it's it's really fun to learn. I, I have been using Covio for a while, the on-prem version, the Covio Cloud, for last two years now, uh, roughly two years, and it, it's it's fun to learn uh, new things. So you guys are presenting here, so so thank you for all the hard work putting this together. Uh, the first question I have, and it's going to be a little bit broader, and this is a non non judgmental question. Uh, hopefully, anyone on the team is not any of the call is not cover person. Uh -huh. So the question is, you know, with we are using Covio, we we have been using Covio for a while, and the use we have right now for our uh, requirement is is pretty. I would say it's pretty basic. You know, we we have content; it gets indexed, and we query it now. 
what I understand from Coveo that Coveo Cloud has has it's more richer and you know, it's more has more features, you know, machine learning and all of that. And unfortunately, we don't have that kind of a, a skill set from the business side of things to go into Coveo and really you know, exploit all the features. Uh-huh. So we are at a point where we are now looking and saying, okay, does Sitecore, Sitecore has now become so big and you know, it's become more than a CMS now with yeah. all the purchase mergers and acquisitions it has been doing. I have this, I, I wanted to get a feel from, from you folks, if you had you nobody know, working with different clients and they probably are using Coveo or not using Coveo. Is Coveo the product for future? If Sitecore is bringing up something like Sitecore Search, Sitecore Discover, should we as customers still be investing in Coveo or should we just wait and watch what happens in the, the next week's symposium? Um, I would say like my personal thought is like I've been dealing with uh, Coveo. I have been doing some work with search stacks as well. Um, I did explore uh, Discover, uh, but my initial thoughts is search stack, uh, like Coveo is more like a premium product and they were like the leaders in the search area when it started and their way up in, in what they're doing. And specifically with uh, search stacks, uh, they are pretty good. They uh, They are catching up. Um, they are known for their solar uh, solar as a service, but now they do have all premium functionalities what Coveo could offer, but uh, for the price which is much cheaper than Coveo. So those are the two things. If you are you want this predictive search, some machine learning and a lot of other things, you can get it from search tags much uh, for a lower price. Coveo is totally different. So the third part is like you asked a question around discover, what is the scope and so all these the three products I, I've dealt with at least two, not with Discover as much, but the client's perspective is different. Some enterprise clients, they prefer Coveo because they use it for other websites as well. Um, search tax is pretty close, I would say. The clients chose, in my case, the clients chose because of the price factor. They didn't want to pay as much for Coveo. They want a cheaper solution. In that case, uh, they went with a state. Like you said, they are having a basic search basic predictive thing, some facets. I'm good. I don't need all the bells and whistles of Coveo. Third one with Discover, the Discover as a product itself is more focused towards the e-commerce at the moment. Uh, They are moving it into a site core search. And I'm also looking forward to see if they have any announcements in the symposium. But I would say it's going to take a little bit of a time to have this seamless integration. What you saw with Coveo, when you install the package, you hit all those things, it's seamlessly integrated, but I don't, I don't see anything that Discover or something that uh, is out of the box supported. It doesn't mean like Sitecore bought it. It doesn't mean like it's all fully integrated. They're working on it. It's a larger project and all their different products are like individual composable stack. It all depends on what you need and what you will need to pay. Okay. Oh, that at the moment, I still see Kobeo is relevant. Search tax is also relevant. It depends on what client needs and what budget they have. Right. No, yeah. thank you for the answer. And yeah, I think you kind of went through all the questions I had. So I'm going to take a pause while I rephrase my other questions and let others on the call also ask. Sure. Any other questions uh, from other people here? If I may. Yeah, it's you. <laughs> okay. So uh, one of the areas, you know, you touched upon, uh, and again, I haven't, re- I haven't read about it. So probably, you know, it's on me. Uh, and it's probably asking a question. Uh, so right now what we're doing is Coveo Cloud, right? Look, Coveo has its own engine, query pipeline, and everything installed on their own, I don't know, Amazon or Azure servers. Uh-huh. So we basically call their, plat- you know, the Coveo API calls in our config. and. So we just make call, we just index items and we query items, you know, we don't have. So you did mention about about Docker support or container support, right? Uh-huh. So are you, um, again, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just guessing based on what I heard in your talk, I would read up. Is Coveo providing their softwares where I can host it on our own Azure platform? Like no. AKS? No. Okay. So what I was trying to mention there is, uh, for instance, we had a recent client that we hosted uh, um, 
we hosted Coveo with an AKS cluster. Um, what it means, like I'm not hosting Coveo, but like we hosted Sitecore, but we need to integrate AKS Coveo um, together. So what happens is you cannot install a package. Let's be clear. So when you're doing with containers, there is no mm -hmm. simple way of like, hey, let me install the package. I have this Coveo and I can make it work. You cannot. You have to have that as a container or more like an image. And that image has to be layered on top of your CM. So that's how you can make this Coveo available inside Sitecore. It's similar to installing installing Coveo, but you have to make it as its own container. So the question is, is Coveo giving us a... So for instance, like Sitecore gives us all the production images from their Sitecore container registry. Mm -hmm. Does mm -hmm. Coveo does that today? No, they don't. They just tell how to do it. And it's on us to go and figure out and build that Coveo image ourselves. So oh. do they support? Do they support it? Uh, when you raise a customer support and say, hey, we are using AKS, uh, we are doing with Dockers and stuff. Yes, they do support it officially. Okay, that's good so to that's know. That's what I was trying to mention. Oh, no, thank you very much. Because I have, I have been using their on-prem version. I've been Coveo customer for like good seven, eight years now. Mm -hmm. So I've used their on-prem product. I've used their Coveo cloud product. They, they have pulled it out, right? You know that like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Back, they pull their on-prem and they don't support it anymore. Yeah, yeah. But that, that's where I, I was like, I was, I was interested and surprised because if they're going to go back and provide, because the Coveo Cloud product is good, it does its job, but it's it's really expensive for what yes. you know, what we what we what we want to achieve. Okay, I think this is a, this is a great answer, and thank you for explaining out that.